Are you ready for him, Leo? Yeah, Leo, I've been ready. You can have him. He was born ready. Okay, uh, Leo, under physicalism, you're saying that propositions are ab abstract things? Abstract concepts, that's correct. Okay, cool. Would a physicalist say that abstract concepts don't, in fact, exist based on what they define ontology, their standard if for they're ontology? a nominalist like I am, yes. But they okay. might be a Platonist where they think okay. abstract objects do exist ontologically in some okay. different Platonistic realm. Okay, so if they said, like, the truth exists, what category are they going to put that in? Truth is an abstract concept. So it doesn't... Does it exist or not? I would say no, because I'm a nominalist about abstracta. Oh, so what does exist from your view? Uh, the physical realm. But that the physical is realm is an abstract it. concept. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. The universe the is physical... not abstract. Hold on, hold on. The universe hold on. causes hold on. things hold to on. happen. Uh, one That's thing what at it time. means to well, be. Hold on. You're, 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 hold on. One thing at a time hold here. Let me, let me check my script. Okay. Oh, listen. The outside world is a referent, right? It can be if it's being referred okay. to in a linguistic it structure. Is, yes. Okay. Is our descriptions identical to the objects? Are descriptions identical to the objects? No. Okay. So when you say there's a world out there, is that, is that reference identical to the referent? No. I'm, I never said it was. Okay. Well, no, you kind of did because no, I, didn't. I asked you. I asked you how do you what what determines whether something exists or not, right? You haven't asked me that question yet. No, I'm willing to answer it. Well, you you said something about the external world, right? I said that there is an external world. You asked me like what oh, yeah. exists okay. then, and I said the external I, world exists. Yeah, I, I said world. the you said the the external world exists from a nominalist position, and I'm telling well, you, no, the, nominalists oh my don't God, think. Dude. See, no, you're missing the point. Nominalism the, applies to abstracta, not concreta. The Great. universe is considered a concrete, not an abstract. No. So the Hold idea on. of nominalism would Hold not on. apply to it since okay, it's a dude. concrete. Okay, great. I don't think so, you understand the difference between abstract so, and concrete. So does the universe exist? Yes. Okay. Is the universe an abstraction? No. The universe okay. is concrete. It stands uh, in oh, causal really? relations. Really? Yes. That's really? What, if it was concrete. You, what does it mean okay. for something to be concrete, Listen, Jim? Dude, you're what does it mean for something to be concrete? Dude, is the term universe an abstract or concrete the term yeah the term in a linguistic structure is abstract that's right so yeah what is you so the thing you're calling the universe itself right requires mm -hmm. this other thing that you deny exists. no the universe would exist if languages didn't the term the thing you're referring to Ooh. is never identical so you need abstract. It doesn't right? need to be to describe things in a language. Yes, we do. Right. So your statement, your position that the only thing that exists is physical things, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. So do you would say, you'd say the mind doesn't exist? The mind. Yeah, the mind exists. Well, is that a physical thing? Yes. How did you determine that the mind is a physical thing? Because I have a basic understanding of neuroscience the mind is the emergent no, result of the processes and functions that no no, no the that's brain, not the question or rather the whole nervous system and that wasn't the question i didn't ask you to, i didn't ask you to define what you think the brain is, the mind is i asked you how do you determine that it's physical i just explained that to you no you, you just you just yes, no yes, you just I asserted did. you may you not just have asserted what the, the explanation but i gave one yes. how did you determine what where the mind is and isn't the mind is contained. Well, it's not really contained anywhere because it's an emergent result. It's like so asking it's nowhere. Me, it's like asking me where temperature is. That doesn't make sense. But temperature is physical. Well, we can point to where hot is, what we call hot, and isolate it in the absence of heat. I'm asking you to do that with the mind, sir. Oh, the brain. Just like we can point to the mind when the brain is metabolizing, and then there is oh. no mind when it's not. Oh, 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 I see. So... You've determined when there's a mind in the brain and when there's not? Yes, that's pretty easy to determine. When the brain How'd is metabolizing, when the brain is metabolizing, there's a mind because we can engage with it. And when the brain is me not metabolizing, you're fucking dead. So clearly not you don't have a mind anymore, do you? Uh, yeah. So clearly you don't have a mind anymore. Do you? Okay, so I'm asking no, you what the muted? methodology okay, So was. I'm asking you what the methodology was. Yeah. Somebody's echoing. Somebody's yeah. echoing badly. 
badly. I'm muted, so can't be me. Do we do we know who this is? Okay, it's gone. What was your question again, Jim Bob? Oh, okay, it was it was that it, you're making a dis. Are you making a distinction between the mind and the brain, or or not? I think there is a distinction between the mind and the brain, but I think both are physical. Okay, so then let's say let's just take a brain, right? And you're looking at it with all well, the. Well, what tools kind of brain is it? Metabolizing, can... or is it just a brain like you're holding in your hand, and it's not metabolizing? Because there's a difference between the two. Okay, so you're holding a brain. We don't know if it's metabolizing. You're well, if you're holding it, it, then clearly it's not metabolizing because it's okay. not in the body absorbing energy, you know, through blood. It's not okay. like it's... Okay, I, I got you. Um, so you're looking at a brain that's inside somebody who's alive and they're functioning. Okay? So the brain is metabolizing. Okay. Okay. So you're looking at a metabolizing brain, right? And that's mm -hmm. the normal brains we all have, right? Most people, or is there anyone who's alive that doesn't have a metabolizing brain? Uh, I would say no. Okay. And so when you look at this brain, you're looking at this physical object right inside encased in the skull. And I'm asking you, how do you determine where the mind is or isn't in that, in that brain? The mind does not possess physical location, much like temperature does not possess physical location. So you're saying there is a distinction between mind and brain, but you can't tell me how you know that because that oh, would I, require I did, you to know where it is. How I knew that. I did tell you how no. I knew that. I can how reiterate you know that. that. Yes, I know that again. because there are different, the brain, you can have a brain where there is something else there going on with it, which we call the mind. And then more can, than the you brain, can see, you can see that there are brains that don't have all that going on. So there's oh, obviously a distinction between those two different states. Oh, okay. Such okay. Hold on. Say that in one, there is a mind present and in the okay. other, there is not. Okay, so your your determination that a mind exists independent of the brain, from your view, I don't is, think minds can exist independently of brains. Okay, but your your distinction here is that there's something going on with this brain and something not going on with another brain. That's correct. That's, okay, and so that seems to be the the question is how did you determine the thing that's going on in one brain is a mind and and because the that's thing... what we call it. Oh, you just call it that? Yeah, no, neuroscientists call it that. Oh, okay. So the phenomenon you call the brain is a, is a collection of activities. There are a collection of activities that are referred to as the mind, yes. Okay, so why is it that they're called something different other than just describing the brain doing an activity? Well, that's what the word mind is. It's a, it's a word that describes the brain as it's metabolizing. So the, it's just the brain, a metabolizing brain. Yeah, the mind is what emerges from a metabolizing brain. That is correct. Now, just like just, now, like, just like temperature emerges okay. from the mean molecular energy of a macro scale. Well, object. we could well we could measure temperature. I was wondering if you what you we call can measure emergent. the mind too. EEG Hold readings on. would be one way to do it. No, that's a brain activity. No, that that's the activity of the brain that we yeah. call the mind. Yes. Yeah, you're just calling it the mind. That's though, right? the, that's what we call it. Yes, I am. Why are you? It why that. don't you just call it the brain? Because the brain is an object. The mind is the emergent property of the functions and processes of that object as it metabolizes. See, I think you struggle with the concept of emergence. That's what I think this is. Well, emergent is emergent uh, is, a, is a reification. It doesn't no, tell me anything. No, it's not. That, yeah, it that's is. not what reification means. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. So so let's take an engine, right? An engine's uh, puffering along there. and Steam engine they, or like in dude, let me get, internal Let me just get it out, dude. Or? Let me get it out jet engine a it doesn't matter an engine that has exhaust so the engine's running would you say the exhaust that you see is an emergent property of the engine yes okay so you know where an engine is working and and you see that if it has an exhaust you're saying the emerge the, the the smoke itself is an emergent property of the engine but it's not it's identical an emergent to the engine. property of the processes of the engine yes when the engine is running it produces exhaust and when it's not running okay. it doesn't Okay, gotcha. But so you're saying the brain itself is an engine, so to speak, and the exhaust is the mind, right? I see. I would have. Uh, that's not a bad analogy, but I think one that's just a little better is that um, the engine is the engine, and when it's running, it produces horsepower, and the horsepower is the mind. So it's a physical force. No. 
That's what uh, horsepower the, is. It produces, yeah, but that's uh, not it produces the energy the analogy. The analogy is that hmm. the mind emerges from the operation of the brain, much like horsepower emerges from the operation of an engine. Yeah. So it's, I mean, from your view, then, then if the analogy is true, that the brain, if the, if the analogy is close, at least that the brain can only produce the outcome it's constrained to produce. I, I guess I don't know what you mean. So if an engine could only produce the horsepower, it's constrained to produce, right? And it only produces the effect or results it's constrained to produce by its by its mechanistic nature. You mean like the measure of the power? An engine can only produce as much power as it can produce? Yeah, like whatever its output yeah. would be. And would I would be say consistent. that that's... That that's just sort of what's the word I'm looking for? Holy fuck, there's a metaphysical term for it. And of course I can't think of it, but that an engine of a given size, yeah, it's constricted to only produce so much horsepower. So just now, like the brains horse, of a certain okay. structure only okay. produce great. a mind capable of so much. That's why dogs okay, don't have complex it. languages like us. Yeah, I understand. So you wouldn't say that the the engine produces a false output, right? That Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Right, it's just doing what it does, right? Yeah, the brain is so, just doing what it does when it matures. Right, right. So if the brain is a mechanism much like an engine and it could only produce the outcome its its nature and mechanistic systems allow it and determine it to do, the question is, how could an output that's completely consistent with the laws of physics be false? I, I don't know. I'm not saying anything like that, though. Well, no, you are. Well, I think you are. And let, let I me am just, not. Let me, no, let me see if let, let me see if you are. Would you say a proposition or an evaluation is is an output of the engine called the brain? Of a sort, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So if it is, the same question is posed. If an engine can only produce what it's, what it's uh, capable of producing, what it's determined to produce by its mechanistic nature, inputs, then <clears throat> I'm asking you if the brain is analogous with the machine, then... A proposition or an evaluation is equivalent to the horsepower we're speaking of. No. So how could, how could, okay, hold on. How could an output of physics in the brain be f true or false? The it output could, isn't. It, the content of the output is. The content? Yeah. Yeah, but the evalu and evaluations are outputs, Dude, but they on, have content. On. No, but that means there needs to be an evaluator of the content, which is another output. Yeah, that's the person. No, that's another output. Yeah, so? So you just said, well, no, the output isn't true or false. It's the content. And I just said, how are you going to evaluate the content? And you said the output. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. No, I don't what problem. That that means evaluations can't be tr can't be true or false. That yeah, proves my argument. Yeah, you just can. said the as as output is... Content. Dude, you said the output isn't the thing that's true or false. It's the content. Yeah. I said, how does how does the machine evaluate the content that's more output? Yeah, you haven't shown right. something. You haven't shown a problem there. Yeah, the problem is you have no access to whether it's true or false because you keep going back into. Yeah, I the do. Output. I can evaluate it. Yeah, that's an output. And the fact that they're both outputs is not contradictory. <laughs> There's no contradiction there. Oh my gosh! If an output is only what it's determined to be, and you said the output, your own words, the output isn't the thing that's true or false, right? The content is mm -hmm. well. The content is there now a new referent. Now I ask you, well, what's the thing that's evaluating the content? It's another output, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. What's the contradiction? Yes, it is. Give me the P uh, and the P. Okay. Outputs aren't true or false. Outputs evaluate content. Mm -hmm. And it's the that's content a... that's either true or false, not the output well, itself. Well, no, you have to evaluate the content. Content that doesn't, doesn't determine it's true or false. It doesn't matter what's evaluating it now. That's the end of your argument. Well, that's dude. not it's what over. I said. The fact that it has to be evaluated isn't really relevant. Do you need to hear the contradiction again? You haven't given a contradiction in the first I did. place. No, I did. you didn't. Okay, you're going to deny this is a contradiction? Premise one. Let me ask you. Oh, no, okay, you're going to die. You don't let me. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to let me. You're not going to let me. Under you're what modality? Oh, you're going to go into, yeah, yeah, go into the philosophy talk. No, to, you to, said to, you to gave one, so tell me under what modality it's a contradiction. Listen, simple. Premise one and premise two are contradictions, okay? What premise? premise? I gave no premises. Premise one, you agreed to, is that outputs aren't the true or false thing. The content is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
outputs are not true or false. The content is, okay? Mm -hmm. Premise two, outputs evaluate the content. Yep. Some outputs that's evaluate a contradiction. the content in other <laughs> that's outputs. That's a contradiction. No con under what modality? Well, under is it a modality. logical contradiction? Is it a deontic contradiction? Is it an elithic contradiction? Under it's what modality is it a contradiction? It's a, it, you so see, you're not you admitting. See, you can't answer because you don't see, know. This is what they do. This is what the philo nerds do. This is the philo nerds do. They know there's a contradiction, and then they go into the subcategories of contradiction and prop logic and all this stuff. Instead of just admitting there's a contradiction If it's there. a contradiction, it should be a contradiction under some given modality. What is that Is modality? it not a contradiction? Under what modality is it a contradiction? Because no, it's not. Under, it's not under any of them. <laughs> basic natural language, premise one states, outputs are not true or false. The content is. Mm -hmm. I asked you what evaluates the content, and you said an output. Yep. There's no contradiction there. An oh, output really? is evaluating so outputs, the content. So outputs output. can't outputs can't be true or false, and yet okay. they're the ones evaluate making the evaluations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Making evaluations is also not true or false. So what what's the contradiction? To evaluate the content, right, mm -hmm. assumes, in, in this physicalist view, assumes that there's another output, right? Yeah. Now, we're what we're asking is whether or not the new content now is true or false, yep. right? What new content? Okay. The new content that's evaluating the, the previous content. What new content? I'm so confused. Whole, you are confused. Output? Yes, I am confused. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me clarify it for you. Output, you said, isn't the true or false thing. The content of the output is what's true or false. I asked you, how do we evaluate the content now? You said more outputs. Well, if more out, if those outputs can't be true or false, then it's content evaluating content, right? No, it's outputs evaluating the content of another output. You just said outputs can't be true or false. That's right. It's the content. So yep. how can a, not how can all outputs a, contain have how, content? How can an output determine what's true or false if you just said it can't? If it can't via evaluation, that's what the output is. Yeah, yeah, I know that. That's yeah, how you know that you're in trouble. That's yeah. the, output. <laughs> the output is the evaluation you're saying. Well, actually, the output is the mind. The mind does the evaluation. A mind is an output of the brain. That's correct. So what are you saying? I'm saying that output two can evaluate the content of output one, and there's no contradiction there. Okay, so so okay, so you have brain A and brain B. No, nope. and brain A, output brain of A. output of brain output. I'm one starting of from brain brains X existing. Contains content. It, yeah, output yeah, you, two of brain yeah. X evaluates the content of mm -hmm. output one of right. brain X. Right, right. Like there's no right. contradiction here. Of course, there's a contradiction. You just you, you still just haven't given it. I did give it. No, you didn't. Out outputs, right, aren't true or false. Evaluations need to be true or false. Evaluations, no. Evaluations wouldn't be truth apt. Propositions would be truth apt. So you you wouldn't need evaluation to know your... is a normative process. Well, evaluations under the physicalist view is an effect of physics. That doesn't matter. That doesn't, yeah, it does matter. No, it really doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it is. Let's say I'm evaluating something. How do you know I'm properly evaluating something? I don't. How do you know anyone's properly evaluating something under physicalism? If they arrive at, well, it depends. If we're talking about something with some objective truth, then we can just look at the objective truth and see if both minds come to it. If you're talking okay. about something that isn't objective, <laughs> that's mind dependent, then there is, then there is no oh, I get it. So, uh, so, true okay. or false way yeah, yeah. to do just the evaluation. To, got it. So appeal to the thing in question. are right. normative uh -huh. processes. Well, no, I mean, eval that evaluation under physicalism is in, in question. So when I ask you, what's the methodology under physicalism to determine whether evaluations themselves are accurate or not, you just uh, you just reasserted the process of evaluation. That's all you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You like said you go to, to the mind. Would you like me you to go reiterate? to the mind. Would you like me to reiterate what I said? First, I first, said it, first, still man the question. Truths that are, so how does... Um, under physicalism, how do, how do we know that a mind is evaluating something correctly? If it's an output, right? Yeah. And you know an output the, is I correct. That says, well, it depends on whether it's true. It can only be correct if it's, if there's some, if it's truth apt. Not all outputs are going to be truth apt. So there is no way to do that if the output isn't truth apt. So does an evaluation come before a proposition? 
doesn't evaluate eva evaluations can happen independent of propositions really yes okay so that means an evaluation precedes a proposition but you don't need to make a proposition to do an evaluation right precedes a pro I, don't, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean okay we evaluate something in the world two brains evaluate something in the world right their evaluation is something that occurs before they start saying truth claims about that thing right potentially yes right so the question is under physicalism if there's two steps to to tr achieving truth right one step is evaluation itself second is making a proposition about the evaluation correct i don't think you need to make propositions to know that something is true well we're talking about in the instance of two conflicting propositions well is there an objective truth to be had there at all even because if not then there's no way to determine who's right and who's wrong because there well, is no who's right and who's wrong if it isn't objective. Well, I would say that under physicalism, if everything is purely mechanistic, that you could never know if it was right or wrong because everything you're coming to as a conclusion is all downstream from physical laws. You're What's completely determined. What's it matter is that yeah. if if a calculator is determined to spit out the wrong answer, how would it know it's the wrong answer? Well, calculators don't know things, so... Well, under under the physicalist view, right, a human being, right, is just determined to do, to give the outputs and conclusions that they're determined to do, just like a calculator. I mean, at some base level, but that's not really meaningful. Right. So yeah, yeah. So so you just you just basically agree with me. It, you just agree with me. Yeah. If calculator, but hold that on. doesn't matter if, because that's not yeah, the scale at which. No, it's not because it's if, not the scale at which we look, we talk about just, human beings. You just, dude, now you you're just, just ignoring scale. No, 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 no. You, that's not scale isn't what's in question if everything's mechanistic it doesn't matter if it's a complex scale or a very rudimentary thing like a calculator input and output is all we're really talking about so if you agree calculators if they're programmed to spit out the wrong response right they still need an independent evaluator to determine whether that response is false otherwise it's just doing what it's doing right it's doing what a calculator does if i if i code a calculator that, that states four plus four equals boobs, I can code it to do that. But the calculator or another calculator is never gonna know if that's true or false. Of now, course. if human beings are analogous to calculators in regards to- I don't inputs, think they are. Okay, well, under physicalism, I don't see how they wouldn't be if they're strictly mechanistic. Because they do much more than calculate? That's that's a the problem is like speed said you no. don't really understand physically no you don't you're understand just, emergence dude you don't now you're dodging scale. no now you're no what am it. I dodging make an argument don't say what, what I don't I understand no you said I was dodging what am I dodging under let's here I'll make it very clear for you under physicalism are both the human beings start start simple Leo are both human beings and other objects in space mechanisms for the most part great well Leo. I think we're at a, a, a stalemate here because from my view, if all thinking and evaluation is all just caused by physics, that there can't be a true or false effect of physics because it's just is what it, it is. It can't be anything other than it yeah. is. Truth is a linguistic concept. Why would physical processes be true or false? They're not linguistic. But now okay, we great. can describe, no, no, like I on. said earlier, the sun emits electromagnetic radi radiation. That's that's not, well, in the language, it's true because it is a thing that happens. But the you, actual you, process itself isn't true because okay, truth but, is a linguistic feature. But but using language itself is in is still a, is a process that's caused by physics yes, from the physical and? view. And it contradicts what you just said about <laughs> things that are happen. The processes themselves aren't true or false. That doesn't contradict that. So I'm asking you, without special pleading, how is it that the I haven't only special pleaded? Yes, it is. I'll tell you how. Okay, I'll, tell I'll me walk how. you through it. I'll walk you through it. Please. For every phenomenon in the world, every uh, effect of physics we know that we can see, every phenomenon in nature that we see. That occurrence itself, without making a proposition, is itself not true or false, right? That's correct. Okay. So everything we know about the laws of physics and its effects, everything that we see in the external world is not 
truth app. It, it, there's no proposition happening. It's just a, an occurrence, an event, or an object, right? That's correct. It's ontology is not true. Okay, app. got you. And what I'm saying is special pleading is that for propositions, which are also effects in the world, completely caused by physics, by the same physics that the tree is and the, and the, the I lake. I don't think and propositions are effects in the world, though. I've, I've they're effects of physics. What? No, wait, but, hold no. on. Our, hold on. Are propositions effects of physics? Are states of the mind? Effects of Our, yes. okay. it just, that means it's part of the Jesus. world. So descriptions. Oh my god. So shut up, oh, fuck off, monster. Um, god, you shut are... your monstrous face. Nobody's <laughs> talking to you. Yeah. Go, yeah. go sew a man uh, skirt. A go sew a man skirt. Shut, shut your mouth. You're crackling anyway. We can't hear you. We can't hear you oh, anyway. Oh You're roboting. Oh, Save some oh. money. Save some money. You monster. <laughs> Jim Bob's okay. dick is shrinking as we talk, and it's oh, more dick God. talk, more it's dick talk. Funny. Yeah, 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 more dick talk. Great, expose yourself. Yeah, we so, like dick talk. So again, anyway, Leo, TikTok. I was interrupted rudely. So, if propositions are caused by physics, your the special pleading is a proposition, which is also just an effect of physics, is the only effect of physics that happens to have some truth truth app property. It's the only one. It's the only effect of physics. So how is it the case that there's all these other effects of physics out in the world and everything we know about them is that they're not truth that, but there happens to be this one that you appeal to called a proposition, which is descriptively the same in its process. It's caused by physics. But you're saying, no, it's a special, it's a special effect of physics. Very special. I'm saying well, making I'm that jump is special. I, I'm, I'm just saying that's about propositions, but I, I can I can grant what you're saying. I can grant that I'm not a nominalist about propositions, and I would just say propositions are also linguistic features, just as truth is. So they they can be true okay. because they're also linguistic, whereas everything else is not. Okay, let me uh, forget your view for a second, and could you see how, from my position, that for a strict physicalist, if they agree with the the statement that all other effects of physics we know of are just happenings, events, objects in the world. But there is just this one that happens to uh, break the constraints. Uh, and suddenly they're, they're now truth apt and they're, you know, we can actually evaluate the truthfulness of this one effect of physics. Could you see how someone like me would say that's special pleading? Prima facie, yes. But not under the explanation that I gave, or all other effects of physics are not linguistic, and propositions are. And given that they are linguistic and truth aptness is linguistic, truth aptness can apply to propositions. But wouldn't that say, on as you said, prima facie, that uh, just special pleading to what's called language is now um, in question? And I'll give you an example. Because no. I'll give you one example. Are there... Are there other creatures out there that, at least from our view, ostensibly look like they're, um, let's say, communicating or using language? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So how the question here would be, how would you determine, how would you determine with a given uh, uh, situation where it seemed like birds were maybe chirping toward each other and we were like, oh, wow, they're kind of using a language. From our view, we see, we think we see that, right? I'm asking you. How would you determine whether or not they're just reacting to input stimuli or they're actually having a meaningful sort of exchange of communication? Well, I think that we could basically describe communication as reaction to stimuli, as okay. in the languages that are spoken to us, or you could say the terms okay. that, are, that is spoken to us, and then we mm -hmm. react to those okay. statements. Okay. Can we overcome our reaction or is that just a further reaction to stimuli? I think we can overcome it in the sense that like you can ignore somebody. So like you can just refuse mm -hmm. to react to it. Okay. But is that, how do you know that's a, not a reaction under strict physical view? Well, that itself would of course be a reaction. Yes. Okay. So if everything's a reaction, then you're not really overcoming. You're just, you're just having another reaction that supersedes the previous one called, I'm not going to talk to you or you know what I'm going to engage or, you know, that's, that's what I'm asking is that, if everything in physicalism is a reaction to stimuli, input, output, what you call speaking, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you call speaking um, is just a response to stimuli that you don't really have control over it. Is that the case? 
Well, your, the, in that, is that something <clears throat> that you do following somebody attempting to communicate with you is going to be some sort of reaction, then yes. But th I would just take that to be trivial. Well, if I, the question of if it's trivial, it, it brings up the another problem here from my view, and I don't think it's been addressed, is that if coming to truth and speaking truth and even debating is all determined reactions from stimuli, right? That means the truth, as we call it, is one other outcome of physics. Would you say under physicalism that what we call the truth as a, a moment in time uh, obtained is basically a, a state of affairs in, in, in the world? For a in moment. the world, no. I would say it's a state of affairs within linguistic systems that humans have. Okay, so then... Could would you say that you could change the inputs and have people say true things without their like without like intentionality and autonomy? Like you just do inputs and they start saying true things. I would need more information. Well, I'm saying like do you, I don't know if you know what I'm asking. Like if physicalism is true and everything we say and do is a reaction to input or external stimuli, I'm asking you. If that's true, wouldn't it follow that you could actually input, uh, create some inputs and variables in human beings and have them say true things and false things because I they're caused so, yeah. to based by, okay. So if that's the case, is it logically and, uh, is it possible logically for now the evaluation of whether they're true to be, to, to, to basically influence the inputs, to have people evaluate true things and have them, have them come out to be false, even though they're true. Yeah. That's possible? I think so, yeah. Okay. And so if it's the case under physicalism that all truth, what we call truth and all falsity is just the the reaction and the result of stimuli from a strict mechanistic process, then would you agree that coming to a truth is mostly an illusory process? I mean, under I don't think... I don't think that it is, but I'm sure there are people out there that do. Right. Well, you would kind of try to take uh, a, no. a a synthesis position, like you'd. Well, I would think say, that it's usually going to be a some sort of normative evaluation that leads people to truth, rather than some sort of illusory right. feature. Right. Right. But if I ask Le you, Leo, just from your own view, forget the strict physicalist for a second. If I said, Leo, everything you learned so far in your schooling and reading and philosophy and all your debates you've had and conversations on the side, that would you say that you had no play, no, no, that your intentionality had nothing to do with uh, every, you know, everything you know today, that everything no, you value I, I today? I say that. Okay. But then would you, would you think that a strict physicalist would have to say that? No. They wouldn't? No. How could they argue that everything they've come to believe and think is true isn't just an effect of physics? How would they argue against well them? because everything being an effect of physics does not defeat the fact that we have intentions well the intentions themselves would be determined by physics right yeah but determinism is compatible with the the notion that humans have volition is it yes but wouldn't the thing you call volition just another determined thing that you have no control over no well what would volition be if everything else is determined, it seems that like ability, that gets you out of physical, uh, physical. That ability to, to choose, that ability to choose between what has been determined. Isn't choice itself something, wouldn't all of our choices be determined mechanistically? Yeah, that doesn't make mean that we didn't have some ability to choose. Wait, some or any, or, or how much? I, I don't think it's like measurable. I think that we have volition when we can okay. make choices. Does that mean that there's some part of our choice that's not entirely constrained by physica physical laws? Some part, some part of our choice is kind of vague, but I think I would say yes in that. So let me just, so I'm a, what's called a compatibilist as are most mm. philosophers. So right. let me sort of break down what this is. The way that I look at it is quite frankly, I don't think that the, the, the notion of choice making makes any sense without some level of determination because th this notion of like pure free will what does what what does it mean to make decisions if there's no antecedent information uh -huh. or states of affairs uh -huh. from which you make your decisions 
Okay, I think you're saying what you're referring to as determinism, uh, determined, you're saying constrained by some uh, either information you do have or don't have and uh, past experience you're maybe recalling. And so what I think what you're saying is how could we possibly um, completely deny determinism if you if by determinism you mean in this case that there are constraints uh, that guide or limit what our outcomes are going to be, right? I mean, again, that I think that's like probably almost an overly simplistic way of looking at it, but it's not technically incorrect. Okay. So yeah, I, I think like, for instance, let's make it, uh, uh, let's, you walk into an ice cream shop and obviously the ice cream shop doesn't serve pizza. pizza. So if you're going to get anything there, you're already determined to not get pizza. Exactly. That's kind of what you're that saying, right? That prior okay. information plays into the choices okay. you make. Sure. And again, I don't think that choice making can happen absent any antecedent information from which the choices are made, such as mm. the information that this place does not serve pizza or say sub sandwiches. Mm. But you, the thing is, you're going to have that information openly available to you going into the store, which would mean that you're effectively already making the choice to not have pizza or sub sandwiches. Right. However, also to add and that to is it, still a choice that you made. I just wanted to add that bit there. Right. I mean, and hypothetically, you could actually convince through your will and persuasion to have the ice cream uh, shop owner to order you pizza. I mean, if they were willing to. Yeah. Sure. So, so yeah, I actually, I agree. If we're talking about there, are there constraints? Are there all these preconditions, the way the world operates that we can't negate, right? We're bound by something, right? And I think the distinction is whether or not creatures are bound by something. In other words, I can't jump to the moon from my free will. But I think this there's a distinction, would you agree, between capability and ability to, to choose? I think so, yeah. I think our okay, ability so, to choose is going to be limited yeah. by our physical capabilities. Right. Or mostly. Like right, you said, right. like, you can't choose to jump to the moon because you can't right. jump to the moon. Right. So we both agree that the constraint of a choice doesn't necessarily determine which choice is going to be made, but it's going to determine what choices can't be made. I, I would say so, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, I would agree with that. But as far as whether or not we're actually making a choice, I think is even a further question. I think I, I understand your position is that you're saying, well, no, I have to reserve some volition, some intent that's not entirely... Uh, determine that i have a say in the matter of what my behavior is um that's what you believe right yeah i am a compatibilist right and that means from that view then there is it makes sense to have culpability let's say you break the law and uh you're facing the judge you wouldn't say well your honor we're all determined so i i'm not i'm not uh you know i don't know what i was doing because it wasn't me doing it i'm i'm the effect of a long uh chain of mechanistic process. just series of processes that would be absurd right to take that view oh, yeah right yeah, but absolutely. except there are philosophies that really do take that view if if log if they took it logically to its end not to my view or your view but wouldn't they be, be consistent to say that though i mean i think some hard determinists might say that that's technically true in their view but i think that a lot of hard determinists are also going to say that they're going to sort of pragmatically grant this notion of volition for for reasons of that sort even though we don't really have any under their view right yeah that's why i find it absurd because then why would you act surprised if people believe certain things if your view was that they had to they were determined to there's no other option for them all you can do is give in more inputs for some weird reason that you're going to change their their brain structure to now spit out different propositions you agree with. And that's kind of what's interesting about, um, you know, let's say anti-theists who take this, this hard physicalist approach that you're not taking, but they, they take it, they take the approach that we're all determined. Our beliefs are all determined and it's just input. And so the, the re like, why would there be a reason to change someone's input? Like, why would there be even a value judgment on like changing someone's mind if changing someone's mind under that view, not your view, but that view just doesn't exist, that there is no changing the mind like persuasion, persuasion, there's just inputs affecting outputs. And so I guess the, the, the goal would be, well, if I can only get a hold of all these variables and inputs to change people's 
uh, brains such that they come up with propositions and views that I agree with, you could, in, in fact, just kind of influence people to change their minds just by uh, by inputs, right? Yeah, I like, think we can like, do that. I think that like when you have a conversation with somebody and then they they kind of start thinking about it and then their mind changes, you influenced that. Um, influence, right. But would you say you completely caused it? From your view, you'd say no. I think right? he, I, I, I would, I would say that in such an instance, you were a part of the causal chain. You might not be the sole causal influence, but you were certainly right. a part of it. Right. That, that, I guess the question is, if it were the case from that view, where you could skip the talking and persuasion part, and you could just inject someone with what's called the truth, right? The variables that cause the truth, because under physicalism, that would be hypothetically possible, logically possible. I think um, it would be logically possible, but I don't think it metaphysically obtains. I don't think so either. But let's say let's just try to grant as much as possible here. Um, the question of like, well, would you if you could do that, would you do it to your baby when they're born? You know what I mean? I like, personally would not, but I'm sure there are people out there that would. Right. Almost like, you know, would you make I've, I've talked to vegans who said they would uh, there is a like if there was an injection that made people allergic to meat, would they? do that to babies, you know, right off the bat. And they said, yeah, you know, I, I find it similar. Is, right. Have you heard of the Lone Star tick? The one yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, They're, like... Yeah. I think they can replicate that. Uh, um, I think they can replicate that as a, as a sort of uh, what do you call it? What do you call it when you like uh, uh, pro provoke in biology, like a reaction, like a uh, term? Uh, yeah, I guess it's stimulant. entered the room. Mark, Mark Reed is uh -oh. here. Um, I have Welcome a question. Uh, I have a question on my side that I think is more uh, more for you than me. Uh, does wave function collapse when the physics of the observer is introduced into the measured system? Um, I don't. Can you repeat that, that one more time? <clears throat> does wave function collapse when the physics of the observer is introduced into the me measured system? When the physics of the observer is introduced. Indeed. Yeah, I guess he's saying like the old, the, the, you know, the statement that like the observer changes the outcome. Is that a, I guess he's kind of assuming that there's a physic, there's something causal in physics causing the outcome to be different. Well, a lot of this comes down to quantum foundations. So uh, like the observer, I can't even remember the statement that you said the observer changes the, the whatever it was. Uh, the measured the state. Was yeah, yeah, the measured yeah. state mm -hmm. um, is... So first off, I don't think that wave function collapse happens. I'm I hold the relational quantum mechanics. Um, I think that wave function collapse is merely a mathematical process of the loss of a superposition, and I don't think this is something that like wave function collapse isn't a thing that physically happens to physical things in the physical world. Is that a an orthodox position at this time or no. not? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Unfortunately, I mean, most physicists don't find much much interest in quantum foundations, but there's a small subset of physicists that do. And it is interesting. And I think it is important to our study of physics, but most physicists are kind of just interested in their experiments and the results of them. I got a chat from Tinublet over on my side. Uh, how do metabolic chemicals in brains convey convey meaning to mind? If they say that they can measure impulses, electrical signal signals, sorry, how does it translate to actual meaning when it comes to data information? That I do not know, and I don't know if that's something that is known. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I always, uh, in fact, when I debate someone who's like a strict physicalist that everything's you know physical and you know they veer into materialism as well <clears throat> i ask them if information's physical do you think information's physical leo information is physical and this has yeah, been said by people is. like no way, um god what was his name rolf landauer um uh -huh. who was the other one oh uh -huh. jesus not not turing um oh my god oh, i can't remember think see that subscribe button hit it hard.